Good afternoon. So I just wanted to give you a quick run through of the Crozer Copper Shell Bay, uh, both the box and the contents, and also to explain a little about what the game is actually about. So the Crozer Copper Shell Bay is the first in the Tiny Tin Tail series of games, which are all standalone adventures set in the same world as Pauper's Ladder. Uh, Copper Shell Bay is solo only, so it's just a one player game um, that is designed to fit in your pocket for scale. It stands about two and a half Pauper's Ladder meeples high. So it is a, uh, it's very much, well, actually, you can see it's smaller than my hand. It's a, it's a nice portable game. So, Crows of Copper Shell Bay, what's it about? Prepare yourself for a tiny tin tail set in the coastal town of Copper Shell Bay. You play a dung shoveler from the local maggot farm who has three days to pay their debt of 60 gems to the wicked crows. Will you spend this precious time fishing and foraging or exploring the carnival and gambling your luck away? You could just wait until nightfall and put in extra hours at work or rest and indulge in some well-earned grub. On the other hand, the Miner's Guild is paying would-be adventurers to venture into the dangerous tunnels beneath the town. The Crows of Copper Shell Bay is a game of luck pushing, coin counting, dungeon crawling and village living for one player. So that's it in a nutshell really. You have three days to pay back your debt to the crows, otherwise you're for it. So we have the rule book. Now, it does have quite a page count, 32 pages, but um, the pages are all at least very small. So if you were to transpose this to, um, I don't know, the Pauper's Ladder rule book, it'd probably be only be at four or five pages. So uh, it's, yes, there you go. <laughs> it's not as daunting as it first appears. Next, we have the various tokens. Now these ones keep track of your assorted stats. So you've got life, equipment, pep, little uh, um, egg timer to keep track of the time and possibly one of the smallest meeples I've seen in a board game. In fact, the pauper from Pauper's Ladder would be able to wear the pauper from Copper Shell Bay as a badge if they were if they were vain enough anyway. So yeah, it's very small, I'm very fond of it, but I dare say I'll be less so um, when I've had to replace several hundred that have been lost. So take care of your meeple. Also, there are little wooden discs that keep track of your um, progress during quests and some cubes for your character's three stats. Also, regular dice. Not much to say about that. You can come back, and so can you. <laughs> oh, for a flat surface. So, most of the game is driven by a deck of cards known as a story deck. So, these will um, govern your quests, showing you what kinds of places and hazards and people you'll bump into while you're exploring the mines underground. But also... There are other actions you can do, and you do these mainly above ground, where you can fish, dig, forage, loot and acquire. And so when you do any of these actions, you draw a card to find to see what you found doing that action. So um, the story cards are multi-purpose, and they do a lot of the heavy lifting in the game. There are also four special cards, and these come out um, during certain quests. I won't show you the contents because um, you're supposed to discover them as you, uh, as you go. And there's also a story's end card. When you get through the story deck, you pay your taxes, discard any rotten supplies, and then refresh the deck again to use. There's also a special exclusive bird. Now, this is for Pauper's Ladder. This is a, a little kind of promo. So you just add this bird to your ever-growing aviary. And this works in the same way as any other, any other bird in the game. The idea is every Tiny Tin Tail game will come with a bird. So, on to the larger cards. So Copper Shell Bay is made up of various locations which you visit across the three days. I'll just tidy the decks a bit. <laughs> so you can visit the beach to go fishing or beachcombing. You can go digging and crafting at the scrapyard. Play some games of luck at the carnival. Go foraging at the glade. Visit the chemist guild to make potions with the, the, what you found at the glade. Or sell them the forageables that you found. The market where you can buy and sell. The miners guild where you can attempt quests, and then finally, assuming you've made your uh, made your payment to the crows, you'll finish the game here and see what else they demand from you before you get to win the game. At the beginning, all these cards will be blue side up, but as the game progresses, some cards will be flipped, and when this happens, taking those actions there will be a little more challenging. There are four different characters you can play as. Each of these cards are double sided. And each character has their own piece of starting equipment and special skills. The se second skill unlocks when you've, uh, when you've reached level three. Um, so you have strength, agility and XP. And these are kept track of with the three little wooden cubes. Then also there's a purse and a rucksack 
which keeps track of your equipment and your gems. And like I say, gems are what you need to win the game. So earn 60 gems, go and see what the crows want, and then you, uh, you're home dry. The game's played over a series of days and nights. During the day, you can explore the town and take on quests for the guild. Various actions will cause time to be spent. And when the time tracker gets to the end of the row, you flip it over to night time. Now, during night time, you can continue on a quest if you're already on one, but hazards will become stronger. If you're not in a quest, then you go home and you can spend the night sleeping, making dinner or going to work until it's morning again. And then at the end of the third day, if you haven't earned your 60 gems, you're toast. So as well as exploring Coppershell Bay, you'll also be taking on quests for the Miners Guild underground. So there are six different quests, three shallow ones, and then when you become level three player, you flip them over to take on the deep quests, which are more challenging. So they, they vary. Um, you'll be taking on nests of scuttlers, trying to find as much rare plum cap uh, fungus as you can, rescuing a lost villager and so on. Each quest card comes with the backstory and the setup rules and then the map itself. And then when you're playing a quest, your little meeple will travel around the chambers, drawing story cards and taking actions depending on the nature of the chamber they've ended up in. So this plays like a, a little dungeon crawler underground. As well as that, I mentioned earlier that you can visit the carnival. And at the carnival, there are four different test your luck kind of games. They're, yeah, they're little kind of like luck pushing mini games where you can try and win more gems and occasionally more equipment. Then lastly, there's a reference card and an achievements checklist. So as you start to explore the game, you'll be able to tick these achievements off. And that, in a nutshell, is the Crows of Coppershell Bay. So everything's still on track for an October release. Um, the main manufacturing has now started. We are, of course, as always, at the uh, at the mercy of the shipping gods. But all being well, I should have the game to ship out to you in October. And of course, it's still available to pre-order. You come back um, on the Bedsit Games website, which, of course, there'll be a link to below this. So I hope it's piqued your curiosity. And you'll have to excuse me. I haven't quite got used to uh, putting it back in a timely manner. That'll do, won't it? There waiting at just under eight minutes. There you go. Thanks for watching. And um, I will be posting up a how to play video very soon as well. All right. See you soon.